Hey Defenders, this is Doug Burks with Security Onion Solutions. I started Security Onion in 2008 to provide a free and open platform to help you peel back the layers of your enterprise and make your adversaries cry. Today, Security Onion has been downloaded over 2 million times and is being used by security teams around the world for threat hunting, enterprise security monitoring, and log management. Over the years, Security Onion has added several new features thanks to Josh Brower. Josh has many years of experience in threat hunting, and he brings all of that experience to this course as the lead instructor. Take it away, Josh. Thanks, Doug, for that introduction. Well, greetings and welcome to Security Onion Essentials. As Doug mentioned, my name is Josh Brower, and I am thrilled to be your instructor for this course. Now you just heard from Doug how we want to see you peel back the layers in your enterprise and make your adversaries cry. But to do that, you need to have a high level of visibility into your infrastructure and the ability to slice and dice your way around the data that visibility brings. Now that's what this course gets you set up to start doing with Security Onion, getting an essential understanding of Security Onion 2 and how it works. Specifically, we're going to start off with an introduction to the platform itself. We're then going to install Security Onion. We're going to download the ISO and run through part one of the install, which is installing the operating system, and then part two, which is the actual Security Onion setup. Well then, uh, at that point, walk through the analyst tools. There are lots of different ways that you can slice and dice that data that we were just talking about. But to do that, you need to have a baseline understanding of the analyst tools and what those entail. We'll finish up with three common workflows that you'll use as an analyst within Security Onion. The first is simply alert triage and case creation. You log into Security Onion, you look at your alert queue, you triage, you work through looking for whether or not this is a legitimate issue or not. If you decide it is an issue, you escalate that into a case. That's the first workflow. The second workflow is ad hoc hunting. This is more where you don't necessarily start with an alert. This would be where you start with a question or a hypothesis, and then you go out and look through the data that we have in Security Onion and try to answer that question. The third workflow is detection engineering. This is a process of developing new detection strategies, and we'll show you how to do that within Security Onion itself. We certainly have a lot to cover in the course, but again, let's start off with a quick introduction to the platform. When we talk about Security Onion, there are many different aspects to the platform, but they all start at the very bottom with the operating system. We currently support both CentOS and Ubuntu as a base operating system. And the reason we can do that is because from an infrastructure perspective, Almost everything within Security Onion uses Docker containers. That allows us to support installations on either CentOS or Ubuntu. Now, if you can imagine, if we have all these different Docker containers and the configurations that go with them, there is a lot of things there that we have to keep track of. And that's where Salt Stack comes into play. Salt allows us to orchestrate and manage all these different Docker containers and the configurations associated with them along with many other aspects to Security Onion. If you're not familiar with Salt, think of it this way. Instead of writing a big script that goes out and installs Docker and brings up Elasticsearch and all these other things, instead, within a Salt configuration file, we define a state that we want the system to be in. We want Docker to be installed with this kind of configuration. We then point Salt at that configuration file and it applies that state. It goes out and does everything that we asked it to do. And then every 15 minutes, Salt checks to make sure that the system is still within that state that we specified. Besides Salt Stack and Docker, we also have the Elastic Stack. We use Elasticsearch for storing the data, Logsash and Filebeat for shipping the logs as well as some parsing. We use Redis for queuing up data. We'll see that in a little bit later. And finally, we use Grafana. Grafana is a tool that allows you to uh, visualize different performance aspects to Security Onion. 
On top of that infrastructure, we have the applications that actually generate the network and host data. The first three, Wazoo, OSQuery, and Beats, are our host tools. The other four, Steno, Siricata, Zeek, and Strelka, are our network tools. Now, some of these may be a little familiar to you. Wazoo, a fork of OSEC, is our host intrusion detection system. Uh, allows you to ship logs from your endpoint and generate alerts based on data that it's seen. OSQuery, another endpoint agent, but a little bit different than Wazoo, focuses more on allowing you to uh, run queries against your endpoint, either live or scheduled, and it allows you to write those queries in a SQL syntax. The final application beats, that would be like Winlog beats or uh, any of the other beats family, from Elastic allows you to ship other different types of logs from endpoints. For our network tools, we have Google Snographer that we use for full pack capture. Uh, we have Siricata that generates alerts based on the network data that it's seeing. We have Zeek, formerly known as Bro, that uh, does a number of things for us, gives us uh, connection logs, uh, generates metadata about uh, the network data that it's seeing. It also extracts files uh, from that network data, which allows Strelka to run file analysis on them. Strelka can also use Yara to do some signature matching as well on those extracted files. All right, now that we have this data generated by our network and host tools, let's look at the analyst tools here at the very top that allows us to pivot around to these different data types as well as like we're fond of saying, slice and dice it. Uh, at the very top, we have the Security Onion Console or SOC. That is the web interface that allows access to all the other tools here. That includes alerts and hunt. We also have Elastic Kibana, which allows you to visualize your, dash or visualize your data using dashboards. And then we have cases. Cases is a component inside the Security Onion Console itself. And using cases, we can actually escalate uh, an alert or some other type of event inside Security Onion and create a case inside of this component, which then allows us to track the investigation all the way to its completion. We also include CyberChef, which has many different tools that are really, really useful for an analyst. Playbook allows you to create uh, detection plays based on Sigma signatures, Sigma rules. Fleet is part of the OS query piece where it um, allows you to run live queries or scheduled queries against all of your OS query endpoints. And finally, we have uh, Navigator, which is a application put out by MITRE. Gives us the ability to visualize our coverage for the MITRE TAC framework across our enterprise. All right, so that is a lot of different components and tools and applications that we have running in the platform. Hopefully this gives you an idea of a little bit of how it all works together. Now, if it's not clear yet, or it hasn't been clear yet, every single piece in here is free and open source. And that's one of the reasons why I've used Security Onion in production personally for so many years it's because it's free and open source, it allows me to get in there and uh, tweak it for my environment, add new components, um, just make it, uh, make it work for me in my security environment. And I think that's one of the most compelling things about Security Onion as a platform. All right, with this background, let's look at use cases and deployment modes. There's many different ways that you can use Security Onion and a number of different deployment modes. So I just want to walk through them to make sure that we're all on the same page here. The first is forensic analysis. If you want to stand up a small virtual machine and run some forensic analysis uh, using uh, PCAPs or other types of logs that you have, that would be a import node and we support that. You can easily import that packet capture and all the network tools and everything related to it will generate alerts. You know, Zeek will generate the data based on that packet capture. All right, so that is a import node. Secondly is an analyst workstation. 
Now, when you are working through an incident uh, and you're possibly having to actually pull out a packet capture or work with a binary in some way, obviously you want to be very careful that you don't infect the underlying workstation that you're that you're using. That's why we provide a deployment mode that is an analyst workstation. We also pre-install um, some commonly used tools like Wireshark and Network Miner, and it's based on CentOS 7. Now these two different deployment modes, you're not actually capturing live traffic. If you wanna capture live traffic or uh, ingest live logs, that's where we have the next couple deployment modes. The first one is more for testing and that's the evaluation mode. Uh, this should not be used in production, it is only for evaluation and testing. If you wanna actually capture live traffic in production, that's where we have either a standalone or a distributed deployment mode. Uh, if you go back to our platform here and you see all these different components, uh, we can either install all of those on one system, that would be a standalone install, or we can install all of these uh, based on their different types on different systems, and that would be distributed. And to be clear from a terminology perspective here, uh, we would say you have a Security Onion grid and it's made up of multiple nodes. So in a distributed environment, you will have uh, different components that you see here installed on different nodes and they would be part of your Security Onion grid. All right, so it gets a little bit more, uh, a little bit more complex, but that is definitely what we recommend for production use. You can use standalone, but that should only be used in uh, limited environments where you just don't have a lot of traffic um, that you will be working with. All right, so we come to the single most important piece that I want to talk about, and that is where to get help. All right, it's great that we have this course and it's great that you can download and uh, install Security Onion for yourself, but you will probably get stuck along the way and that's very normal, right? So where do you go to get help uh, when you get to that point. First off, if you go to securityonion.net slash help, that will redirect you to a page on our documentation website where uh, there'll be all these different resources listed out to uh, guide you in which direction to go. So first off, it'll be our documentation website, docs.securityonion.net, which include extensive documentation about all the different components we just saw as well as FAQs and um, other things related to that. If you still need help and you're not finding the answer that you need in our documentation, you can then use our community support form, which is GitHub Discussions, and that link will be on the website or on the page when you go to securityonion.net slash help. Finally, if you want more paid support, Security Onion Solutions, we do offer paid support. And again, you can get that information on the page under securityonion.net slash help. All right, so that is it for our introduction to Security Onion. Next up is we're actually gonna run through an install of Security Onion part one and part two. So I will see you in the next session.